Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Braided Man Studios, and in this video we're going to go over the Network Instantiate. Uh, we're not going to be working with the buffered one, we have another tutorial for that. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene. Uh, so, I have this new scene. Uh, I want to drop in a network, or I could just type in manager. I want to drop in a networking manager, because it's going to have a list of what we're going to instantiate on the network. I'm going to go to game object 3D cube. So I have this cube here and I'm going to make it into a prefab. But first I'm going to add a rigid body and I'm going to add a networked mono behavior. So now that I've added that, I'm going to go into prefabs and I'm going to drop it into prefabs and I'm going to delete it from my scene. Now, inside of the networking manager, I'm going to drag the cube into the network instantiates, which is a list of objects that can be instantiated on the network. And now we're going to create a script so that when we press uh, spacebar, it will spawn this object on the network. So inside of scripts, I have this create test, and we can open it up. And it is just uh, this bare bones script, and we're going to make it so that when we press spacebar, it uh, loads on the network. So notice I'm using beardedmanstudios.network and I'm going to make a public game object uh, target which is the thing we're going to spawn is null. A, uh, we're going to do a private void update for our key input so if input dot get key down key code dot space we're going to call networking dot instantiate and the object is going to be target. The receivers is going to be all, and since that's default, we can we can just go straight to callback. And we're going to type in uh, on created there. So now we're going to make a function private void on created spelled the same exact way as this one. And it's going to take in a game object uh, new object, and this is the object that has been spawned on the network. So I'm going to do a debug dot log. Uh, we just, let's say, created a new object plus new object dot name. So it's going to print out the name of the object that was just created. The reason we have this callback method is because the system is completely multi-threaded and authoritative. So that means that uh, we are able to get the object once it's created on the network through this, uh, this delegate here. So let's check this out inside of the editor. So back inside of the editor, what we're going to do is on the networking manager, I'm going to drop the create test script. And inside of the target here, I'm going to drop the cube as the target that's going to spawn. Now that I've had this set up, I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it at as create test. I'm going to open up my build settings, and I'm going to make sure these are already in here from testing. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I hit add current here. And we're going to type in menu. We're going to load up the default menu. I want to add that one to the build settings. Now inside of the menu on canvas, let's make sure that the scene name we're loading is create test. And we are ready to go. So I'm going to build and run. I'm going to make this guy the client and the editor the server per usual in our videos. So we're going to client join. So when I press spacebar, you'll see that it spawns on both the server and the client. There is no callback for the server when it's created, but now when the server creates it, we'll get that callback and it says we just created a new object cube. And that's just going to keep going. And let me see if I can catch it on the client. There we go, on the client too. So uh, that's how we can set that up. Now, what I do want to cover is how Network Instantiate works. So Network Instantiated uh, network instantiate is used to create networked mono behaviors or simple anything that derives from simple networked mono behavior as these need identifications on the network they need to set up across the network and do all of this other stuff so you only want to call networking dot instantiate on objects that derive from simple networked mono behavior much like our prefab here on our cube it is a networked mono behavior which when you have the source code, you can see that actually derives from simple networked mono behavior. So it does have to be created through network.instantiate. So your question may be, well, if we don't create objects that aren't derived from simple network mono behavior through network.instantiate, 
how do we do it? Well, the answer is through RPCs. With RPCs, you can create those objects because those objects are on both sides and they don't need to be set up across the network. And we'll see how that is done uh, right now. So back inside of the editor, I'm going to create a 3D object, a sphere, just so it's different. And I'm going to add a rigid body to that. And I'm going to save the sphere into our prefabs. Now that it's down here in our prefabs, I'm going to jump back to our code and I'm going to create a public game object not networked target equals null. And this is an object uh, that's just going to be simulated on the, on the client and the server, but it's not going to be replicated. And you could do this for particle effects or anything that kind of just happens that everybody just simulates and it doesn't need to be uh, in sync across the network. So we're going to jump back to our script and we're going to assign this uh, value. I mean, we're going to jump back to our scene and assign this value. So I'm back in here. I'm going to delete the sphere from this scene. And I'm going to go into our scenes, create test. Let's save this scene since I've already set it up. And the networking manager uh, down here on the not networked target is where we're going to put our sphere. We do not need it inside of the network instantiates because it is not going to be spawned with networking.instantiate. So now that that's set up, we're going to save and go back to the menu. And we're going to uh, now just set up the rest of the code to spawn this object. So to set up a BRPC, or a remote procedure call to spawn this object, we're going to set it to a different key. We'll set it to if uh, input.getKeyDown keycode.f. So if we press the F key, we're going to spawn this object. So we're going to say RPC make sphere, just like that. So make sphere has not been created. Uh, and second of all, uh, we cannot call an RPC from the mono behavior. So this is going to have to become a simple networked mono behavior. So simple networked mono behavior. And we're going to set up the makes sphere function. So to do it, we do private void make sphere. And all it's going to do is instantiate that uh, sphere. So we're going to say instantiate not networked target. And lastly, we put our BRPC flag above this function so that it becomes a remote procedure call. However, before we continue, this is critical, we need to make sure that our update is overriding the base update now that we're deriving from the simple uh, networked mod behavior. So we're going to do protected override void update and then base.update here. Now we're ready to test it out. So just build and run. So I'm going to make this the client and the editor the server. So I'm going to press spacebar, and you'll see the cube is created on both. And I'm going to press F, and you're going to see the sphere is created on both. The sphere is uh, not synchronized like the cubes, so if I press spacebar a bunch of times, you'll see that the cubes will replicate the same on both, but if I press F a bunch of times, it's very possible that you can see that they're replicated differently uh, on both. That is because the sphere is not a networked mono behavior, uh, so it's not replicated, and that's why we do not use networking.instantiate to instantiate that cube because it does not derive from simple network mono behavior. So that's it for instanti instantiating on the network. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, if you would, if you have any feature quests or anything else, please let us know, and we'll be happy to uh, accommodate. So, until next time, thanks for watching.